Hey Fields friends, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about inferring. And good readers always use their schema and they always infer when they're reading. Inferring means that they're going to make guesses as they read and you're going to think about what you're reading so that you can predict what might happen next. Today I'm going to do this using a book called New Shoes. My cousin Charlotte hands me the package as we stand outside Johnson's shoes. If you could have any shoes in the window, I ask, which ones would you choose? Those, Charlotte says, pointing to red sandals. What about you, Ellie Mae? Today, I choose saddle shoes. They'd be just right for back to school. But I know fun well, it's just wishing. Money's too tight for new shoes. I can infer that her family might not have a lot of money. When I get home, Mama opens the package. Winslow's shoes are in good shape, she says. She hands them to my brother, Clayton. That's the way we always hand them down. Winslow's shoes go to Clayton, Charlotte's go to me. I clean Charlotte's old shoes, but when I put them on, they pinch my toes. I show Mama. Mama sighs, we'll just have to scrape together money for new shoes. Shoes I pick out myself? I can't believe it. On Saturday, we're going to Johnson's. Hmm, my guess is that she's going to want those shoes she saw in the window. On Saturday morning, when we walk in, the bell jingles. Mr. Johnson looks our way. Behind us, the door jingles again. A girl with yellow curls walks in with her daddy. Mr. Johnson heads towards them. I wonder what this girl is pointing at. Oh no, I hope it's not the same shoes that Ellie Mae wants. Mama and I walk to the back of the store and stand against the wall. That blonde-haired girl tries on shoes, posing in front of the mirror. I sigh. <sighs> Weren't we here first? But I know colored people always have to wait. Finally, the girl's daddy buys her a new pair of shoes and they leave. Hmm, I can infer that this book must be taking place a long time ago because they use the word colored people. And I know that we don't use that now. How can I help you now? Mr. Johnson says to us. I point to a display of saddle shoes. I want to try those on, sir, I say. I hear Mama suck in her breath. Oh, well, we'll do something different, Ellie Mae, she says. We'll make a picture of your feet for Mr. Johnson. But, I start to say, pencil and paper are over there, gal, Mr. Johnson says to Mama. Mama traces my feet. Mr. Johnson takes the paper and comes back with a shoe box. Mama holds the shoes next to me, and Mr. Johnson fidgets. Yes, I think these will fit, Mama says, and she counts out her money. Hmm. By looking at Ellie Mae's face right here, I can infer that she's upset. And it didn't say that in the book, but I'm inferring using my picture clues. Rain is pouring down when we leave. Mama snaps open her umbrella. Mama, I say, can't colored folks try on shoes? Mama sighs. No. But then she puts on a smile. Let's think about how nice your feet will look for school. I like my shoes, but it isn't fair that the other girl can try them on and I can't. Mama and I walk together, listening to the rain. The next day at the schoolyard, I show Charlotte my shoes, but then I can't tell about what happened at the Johnsons. Charlotte nods. That happened to me, too, she whispers. Even though I have new shoes, I feel bad most of the day. But then, during spelling, I have an idea. I tell Charlotte as we walk home. Yes, she says, I'll help. So Charlotte and I do the chores. We scrub, we pick the last green beans, we mind babies. Most folks say they can't pay much. Never mind, I say, we'll work for a nickel and pay for outgrown shoes. At the end of the month, we line up, at the we line up our shoes on empty shelves in the old barn next to our house. Charlotte scoops up the coins. I'll go buy the polish, she says. Hmm, I wonder if they're going to sell these shoes. While she is gone, I clean the shoes with soft rags. Then I pull out all the dirty shoelaces. 
I wash them in lots of soapy water until the water squeezes off them clean. I hang the laces on the clothesline to dry in the sun. Charlotte comes running back. I call red, she says. She uses a nickel to pry open the red tin and I open the black. I take a pair of shoes and rub the polish in and then I scrunch up my hand and scythe, smoothing out all the wrinkles and buff the shoes until they shine. I can infer now. I know that she's going to make shoes like the ones she saw in the shop. The red ones. The sun has dried the laces now. I thread them back through the holes. Charlotte holds up the shiny red Mary Jane she has been buffing. Almost as good as new, she says proudly. The neighbors know we are ready to move even before the paint on our sign is dry. Ellie Mae and Charlotte's shoes, it says, price 10 cents in another used pair. Miss Douglas peeps in the barn door, holding little, little Laura's hand. Right behind them, I see even more neighbors coming. Look at this, Miss Douglas marvels. No need to go to the Johnsons now. Then she hesitates. Last time the shoes from the Johnsons gave my Laura blisters, she said. Can she try these on and see which ones fit best? Charlotte and I smile. We hold our heads up proud. Yes, ma'am, she can, I say loud and cheer. In our store, anyone who walks in the door can try on all the shoes they want. Hmm, I predict that a lot of people are probably going to come to this store. So not only did we get to infer and make predictions about this story, but I think Charlotte and Ellie May might have taught us a lesson. So talk with the grown-up at home about what you think the lesson might have been in this story, and maybe have a conversation about why good readers should always infer. See you next time!